James, 32, and Mary, 30, had been married for 10 years. During that time, they have had two children, a son named John and a daughter. James and Mary have always endeavored to give their children the best opportunities. They enrolled them in various activities they enjoyed and sent them to private school. Although James was the primary breadwinner, Mary was content to use her own earnings to fulfill personal desires as her husband supported the family financially. James was an exemplary husband. He helped around the house, took a genuine interest in the children's lives, and spent time with them. He gladly honored Mary's requests and even took her on romantic dates. Mary felt happy when James was around her as he fully supported her hobbies and pampered her with visits to beauty salons and other luxuries. Friends and co-workers often invite Mary for having such a wonderful man in her life. Even her mother advised her to take care of her husband. Time passed and James faced setbacks in his career due to a crisis in the company. As a result, Mary had to look for a new job to supplement their income. Despite criticism from others, she felt it was her responsibility to support James during this difficult time. Mary comforted her husband by reminding him that setbacks happen to everyone, and they promised to be there for each other in good times and bad, in wealth and poverty. James appreciated having such a devoted and supportive wife. He expressed his gratitude and recognized that his decision to choose Mary as his life partner was the right one. On the day of the interview for the new job, Mary was nervous, but her husband calmed her down and took over making breakfast and brewing coffee, which Mary usually did. He wanted to do something special for her to show his support. Even if they don't pick you, it's no big deal. Then it wasn't meant for you. James reassured her before she walked away. Though his words didn't temper her nervousness, they warmed her heart. It was always nice to know that the person you admired truly believed in you. Mary returned home in the evening, full of joy and carrying a bottle of champagne. Can you congratulate me? She exclaimed from the doorstep. James hugged his wife tightly and exclaimed, You'll do great. I never doubted you. You're a smart woman. Mary had already been at her new job for a year. Meanwhile, James' business was also booming. The family was finally back in familiar and comfortable surroundings. James was back to being the breadwinner, and Mary was now able to indulge her needs. However, James began to notice that Mary was spending more and more time at work, sometimes even late into the evening. She began to purchase brand name clothes, and when he asked her about them, she would say that she had bought them on sale or had gotten them from a friend. James was surprised and felt somewhat awkward. One day James suggested to his wife that they take some time away from each other. He wanted to go out with friends so Mary would have an extra opportunity to see her friend. I'd rather stay home while the kids are with grandma, Mary replied. Keeping his feelings to himself, James said goodbye to his wife and headed out to see his friends. He rarely had the opportunity to spend time with them so each meeting became more and more valuable. Today, he even gave in to the entreaties of one of his friends. Let's go to a nightclub. There's a great DJ playing there. Let's look at the girls, his friend suggested to him. I'm married, in case you forgot. James patted his friend lightly on the shoulder. How could I forget? Well, you can enjoy the music while I rate the girls, his friend grinned. His name was Robert. James didn't know what made him do it but he agreed. Clubs hadn't particularly appealed to him when he was younger. They were crowded, stuffy, filled with inebriated people, and the music was hard on his ears. By the time James and Robert reached the club building, it was past midnight. After paying the entrance fee, they entered the teaming room, which was immediately swallowed up by the deafening music. Girls were dancing on the stage, and guys were sitting at tables and at the bar, casually sipping cocktails and enjoying the sight of the women. Suddenly, Robert appeared on the left with two glasses in his hands. He held one out to his friend, and they toasted to their reunion. Under the influence of alcohol and the sound of music, the friends settled down at the bar and began to reminisce about their youth, university, and first jobs, often bursting into uncontrollable laughter. Out of the blue, 
James noticed a familiar face on the dance floor, his wife's. He swiftly made his way through the crowd, involuntarily pushing past people. Hey, watch it. Someone shouted, but James paid no attention to it. His attention was focused solely on his wife. However, she wasn't dancing alone or with a friend, but with a stranger James had never seen before. The stranger put his arm around Mary, and James' heart dropped when he noticed their hands wandering where they shouldn't. It was obvious that this meeting at the club was not a mere coincidence, but a planned date between the two of them. Overwhelmed with rage, James rushed over to his wife and turned her around to face him before spewing the cocktail in her face. Mary froze in place, dousing him with the icy drink, while everyone around them turned their attention to the chaotic scene. What the hell are you doing here? shouted James, trying to be heard through the din of the music. The stranger stepped toward him confidently, trying to pull him away from Mary. Get your hands off me, James growled, resisting the man's grip. I can handle this myself, Michael, Mary shouted. Grabbing his wife by the sleeve of her blouse, James forcefully led her outside. Despite the summer night, the air was cold and damp from the spilled drink. Mary immediately shuddered and clenched her teeth. James, still under the influence of alcohol and stunned by the music pulsing in his ears, questioned his wife's actions. Sighing heavily, Mary admitted that she had met a man at her new job. Their relationship had grown into something deeper, and they could no longer hide it. I want to leave, but I haven't had the courage to admit it to you, she admitted quietly. James was filled with anger unable to understand how lies and deceit have become part of their relationship. Everything made sense now, both the lavish gifts and Mary's frequent tardiness home. I'm not giving you the kids, don't even get your hopes up. James gritted his teeth, hesitated, and continued. And you can get out of here. He felt a lump in his throat, but held back the emotion. He wasn't feeling sorry for himself or brooding over the situation. The only thing he cared about now was how to explain everything to the children later. Mary herself explained to the children what had happened and why she was leaving. Her daughter cried and begged to stay with her, while her son John flatly refused to leave his father. Despite James' entreaties, the children insisted on separation. Catherine moved in with Michael, a stranger she met at the club. She and her daughter settled in his apartment but soon even the daughter returned to her father. The relationship with her stepfather didn't work out. He refused to accept her presence, and eventually Mary chose Michael over her own daughter. It seemed that the new love meant more to her than her own child. However, soon the relationship with her lover deteriorated. Michael showed signs of alcohol addiction, turning innocent trips to clubs and prolonged binge drinking. After some time, Mary decided to leave him seeing in this opportunity to reunite with their children. But the children were no longer eager to reconnect with their abandoned mother. They harbored resentment and were particularly hurt by the ease with which she sent their daughter back to her father, simply because Michael demanded it. James endured the pain of his wife's infidelity for a long time. But after a year, he met a woman with whom he decided to give love another chance. He realized that just because one woman betrayed him it didn't mean he couldn't find happiness again.